This is a match a lot of people have been waiting for, including myself. Uh, I think Matira as well has been waiting to play against Rawas because I've asked him about um, show matches in the past and uh, what he's interested in playing. And Rawas is one of the players he wants to play. He's told me this. So Matira has got what he wanted now. He's, uh, he's got a shot at Rawas. Everybody loves to test their offense against Rawas. I mean, he's the best defender in the world. So everybody wants to attack against him and see, can they be the guy uh, to cause him problems? Matira right now is the only undefeated player in Europe in uh, this side of uh, the Salt Mine 3. Now let's get into it. Ruas versus Vatira. It is the final round of EU group stage. And away we go. Vatira has been unstoppable. You know, he had a lot of 1v1 critics coming into this tournament as well that he has absolutely silenced up until now. Uh, here's his biggest test yet. It's Ruas, and it's Ruas, in fact, who immediately scores to put himself in front. Earlier today, Matira had a five-game thriller with Toxic that he was able to win. And Ruas, of course, had a five-game thriller at TRK that he was not able to win. So it's a really, um, really interesting run that they both had through the group. But Tira has been that guy. He's been dominating this group just as much as Zen dominated Group B going into the final round. Put in France on top of 1v1 as well as 3v3. And you know, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I think Batira will have a pretty good um, style to take on Rawas. Uh, you know, the guy who's had the best results against Rawas has been Moxie. And hey, Batira, thank you very much for um, scoring right after I say that. Great timing. But uh, yeah, the reason I think Batira is going to have a good match against Rawas, or you know, should stylistically have a good one, is because he doesn't rely on the aerial game. He's got the confidence on the ground. Um, and he likes to be physical as well. You know, when Moxie does well against Ruas, he's very physical, he's very grounded. Batira will be perfectly comfortable in those avenues. And hey, a kickoff goal is not gonna go uh, badly either for him. 3-1 early, Batira looking phenomenal already. You know, uh, we're talking about how Vatira wants to play against Rawas. I'm sure Rawas wants to test himself against Vatira as well. He's such a... Such a fierce competitor. Everybody wants to play against him. Everybody wants to play with him. Rawas gets a key demo here and another goal. Every goal this game so far coming out of explosive situations. Looks like Matira there was expecting Rawas to maybe pull out of that challenge and leave the ball briefly. No such thing. Rawas just plows on through and scores. Rawas control in defense. Lots of boost being used here to try and get the ball moving, but the reset will help. Unfortunately for him, he drops it very low. That is not the recovery that he wants. Vatira easily slots the open net. A rare sight, a big mistake by Ruas there. Overextending. You know, he had, he had a little bit of boost left over at the end of that flip reset play, but I think the, the flip reset was the issue. He kind of just dumped it downwards um, without really threatening a goal, which uh, left Vatira with a very easy decision to make. Oh, it's another easy decision for Vatira. Once again, Rawas is overextended and this is a rare sight for Rawas to get baited in this often. Vatira just accepts another goal donation, puts himself up 5-2. Rewashed is crazy. I don't think I've ever heard Rewashed before. <laughs> Absolutely insane uh, trash shock there. Um, I, I wouldn't say he's rushed. Well, what is happening here? But Zira just drives up to the ball, and uh, I guess he didn't want to flip into it. I guess he didn't think Rawas would flip into it. 
because, uh, yeah, he didn't do anything at all. <laughs> now, obviously, Batira there, when he's driving up to the ball, he doesn't want to just flip into the ball and give it away. He's, you know, thinking about the possibility of Rawas uh, just reversing and accepting the ball when Batira hits it into him. But, I mean, you've got to also cover the potential shot, um, and that's something he didn't do there. Rawas taking his time to set up his next attack. Batira wildly pre-jumping there. Not the best recovery on the inside of the post. Rawas forcing a bad save out of Atira. And he will get a goal off the back of it. And this is the difference between landing on the back wall and landing in your goal. Atira was not able to close the gap there before Rawas turned around and started the ball moving again in offense. Small difference in where you land, but a big difference in outcome. Rawas with more defensive control here. Vatira lunging in, looking for the bump. In fact, Rawas just parks in front of him. He's holding Vatira hostage while letting the ball roll into a favorable position. Rawas is refusing to flip into the ball here. He's just letting Vatira hit it into him. But I think Vatira's going to come away with a favorable position after all is said and done. Oh, nice boost grab by Rawas. Vatira could not play the ball and also secure mid boost by the looks of things. And Rawas calls his bluff again. Vatira's done this quite a few times this game. Just fake jumping near the ball and hoping Rawas will believe it and back down. But really no need to back down there for Rawas. He can wait, see if Vatira is actually planning to go upwards. And the problem about what Vatira is doing there is that as soon as his car starts falling down again, you can't go back up. You've, you've already committed to the fake and the ball is above you. So Rawas can just play it for free. Oh, what a shot, Rawas. It was saved by Vatira. That <laughs> might be save of the game so far. And Rawas is in the lobby. What a play by Vatira. Rawas had a great effort on that. Vatira is trying to stop him here. That won't, won't be able to recover. Rawas strips him. Just a little bit too good. Lovely counter by Rawas there. Vatira getting a little bit out of position. This is turning into a real war of 50-50s and fake 50-50s which uh, Rawas already had to play today earlier on against CRK. Something that I know, I know Vatira is very familiar with. It's a play style that he loves to use. Oh, what a save. Rawas has landed horrendously here. Vatira's got about a month to score this. He doesn't take a month, though, just a couple seconds. Rawas thought there was an opening, but there was definitely no opening there. Vatira darting across the net to make the save. And as the easiest counter-attack of the day, not the first counter-attack, I think maybe third or fourth counter-attack he's had this game against an overextending Rawas. A rare sight. See Rawas overextending. Nice bump by Vatira. He gets the ball past Rawas as well. Wide open and a goal. And Rawas says, nice one here. <laughs> it's a pretty, a pretty uh, interesting shot to say nice one on I'm gonna be honest with you like if somebody said nice one to me there in a rank game I would assume that they're just uh, being sarcastic because of the bump <laughs> we'll have to wait and see oh what a brief flip on goal Fatira with own goal of the day what a finish he lost the kick up pretty badly and then absolutely sent the ball into the roof of his net unstoppable I mean Good luck saving that one. Too much power. And we're back to a tie game for now. Um, and we will not be at a tie game for long because Rawas can't save that. Looks like it might have been savable. This was a, obviously going to be a very difficult save. I think Rawas could have... Yeah, it was me. Yeah, if he, if he had the absolute perfect flip there, maybe it's savable, but that's so hard. Can't expect even Rawas to get that one right. High scoring game. Tira not having a lot of difficulty getting the ball past Rawas, but he has had some problems stopping Rawas advances as well. We could be headed for 10 goals for both players. But Tira looking for the bump. Oh, Rawas dodges him and he scores his eighth goal. How on earth has he dodged that one? I told you Batira is going to take any opportunity he can to get physical. Oh, it's the second jump. That's crazy. Rawas jumped once. Batira thought that was it. And then Rawas jumped a second time right as the bump was about to land. And then flies into the ball for the open net. That is unreal. 
Eight goals apiece. <laughs> These guys have really had a lot of difficulty defending. Not so much difficulty scoring. Ruas sets up another very tricky position for Vatira. Vatira does well. Ruas looking to mind game him on the goal line. Vatira not having any of it. And now he just walks through the ball. And I think that would have been a goal if he had the wave dash after flipping, but he didn't, uh, didn't get the right landing there. This is a better chance now. Vatira air dribbles. Ruas covers it well. I mean, this is Ruas' speciality. Saving aerial shots. Ruas chases it to the back corner. Vatira survives. And he takes away the ball as well. Another air dribble by Vatira. Shoots it directly to the bottom corner. It's in! No ground pinch. Just placement. 29 seconds to go. And it is Vatira. He didn't even need a wave dash here. He just placed it perfectly, saw the gap, and you know, Ruas was actually baiting that shot. He wanted the shot, but I don't think he wanted that shot in particular. That was maybe just a bit too good. And Vatira looking to go up by another goal. He's absolutely been it, and he's conceded. <laughs> I don't believe it. Oh, I do not believe it. Vatira had the first touch, but then he passed the ball to Ruas. He lands backwards while recovering. <laughs> and he's conceded again. I do. I, oh, what am I watching? 9-9. Nine, nine. <laughs> no holds barred here. They're just going for it every time. And we're still on track for 10-10 if we get some last-minute goals here, some last-second goals. Rawas has done it. It's a 10th goal. Or oh, wait, he's missed. It hit the post. You've got to be joking. Matira's got an advantage here. He's got boost and he's trying to attack. Messes up the flick. It's Ruas next up with the play. I think Matira's got us into OT. Yes, he has. Well, we won't be seeing two players in 10 goals, but one of them will. Nine all in game one. This could be, if we keep going like this, it's going to be a long day. I hope you're enjoying it so far because everything's gone to game five. And if this one stays this close, I could see it going the distance as well. Matira, fake challenge. Ruas bites on it. Really well done there by Vatira. Convincing fake challenge and turning in a good position as well. Huge flick given the boost that he had. Vatira picking up small pads brilliantly here. He's not had a big pad in a while. Ruas had to play the ball there. Now the demo's available. Ruas goes for the shot instead. And Vatira's deflected it wide. End to end stuff. Vatira pops it high to set up the boost seal. Stays in the middle to threaten a rebound. And that causes Ruas to just hit the ball away from him again. Not a lot of control for Ruas, not a lot of time to control the ball. And it's another chance for Vatira. Approaching a minute of OT, which is a monumental amount of time in 1v1. There we do cross the minute. Ruas dodges a demo in defense. Still trying to hard clear the ball into safe positions. Oh, what a play. Vatira flies over him to secure the back corner boost. Opens up an angle with the dribble. This is tough for even Ruas to save. And he just about does it. He gets it into the corner. And look at that for a recovery. How did Ruas get back that quickly? He wins 10-9 in a minute and 21 seconds. Ruas doing what Ruas does. Crazy save and an even better recovery from what was it? It was such a tricky position, but wow, what a game. Matira Ruas delivering so far. A 19-goal thriller goes the way of the Saudi Arabian. And you can see a little bit of field control there for Vatira on the next rank post-game stat. Shout out to the next rank. A Rocket League course for ranking up. Apparently Jack and Johnny Boy. That's me. Sign up for on thenextrank.com for a 50% discount on release. Let's see if we've got any results in the rest of the group. Let's bring in the blimp. I'll see what, uh, what's happening. We've got a battle for relegation. We've got a battle for first place. TRK 1-1 against Oski. Uh, that's really big for Vatira and Ruas. They want Oski to beat TRK. They want Oski to take games off TRK um, in order to get TRK out of that race for first. That's what they're looking for here. Most of all. Yeah, elsewhere. Toxic and Shady. Pretty simple scenario there. Loser of that will be um, heading to promo relegations. So they're at 1-1 as well. Toxic and Shady fighting for their stage 2 spot as we speak. Um, but right now, we're going to get right back into game two for Rawas against Vatira. If it's anything like that first game was, we're in for a treat.
Still, first kickoff does go the way of Atira. Oh, it's a big play off the back of it. That first touch is absolutely ridiculous, but how about that for a flick midair after grabbing the reset as well? Atira in great form today. As he continues to impress the world of 1v1, joining the top dogs. Everybody knew what players like Zen, Boxy, Ruas, TRK, even now Poke do coming into this tournament. But uh, Matira was a little bit more of a dark horse. He's drawing up huge. You know, for me, I don't think he was a dark horse. I, I think Gamers 8 was convincing enough, but of course it is just what, uh, one game here and there in a crew battle, so I could see why a lot of people wanted to see more. I definitely wanted to see more, even though I was convinced he was at or very close to the top level already. You know, what really makes Vatira so dangerous and so difficult to play against is the confidence that he plays with. He just has such belief in himself to execute um, at a level that no one else can. And you know, that confidence sometimes gets him some hate. Some people don't like it. Some people think it's cocky, but I think you gotta respect it. To have that level of confidence clearly helps him with his gameplay. And to go up against that, when you can just clearly see that your opponent is confident, it, it's, it's scary uh, to go up against. Even for players like Berwas. It's not comfortable. This is definitely not comfortable. Ruas trying to make a heroic save, but the shot's just a bit too fast. Brilliant positional play by Vatira here. Tight turn in an awkward position to generate enough power that Ruas can't get back in time. And, you know, these plays look awkward because both players are so close to the ball. The ball's not moving very quickly. There's not really any potential for anyone to accelerate it um, at any kind of pace. So both players are quite happy to just sit on top of it. It really goes to show that shadowing in Rocket League, it's all about not just where the opponent is, not just where the ball is, but how fast the ball is moving, how much potential the opponent has for accelerating the ball in a given position. If they don't really have any way of accelerating it, you can shadow close. But if they're supersonic and their name is Moxie, then yeah, you might want to shadow um, on the other side of the pitch because he's probably about to flick it top corner. Ruas has been playing chess matches all day. Lost out a tight one against TRK earlier. Now, he did another one against Vatira. Vatira keeping his wits about him here. Wants to keep an eye on it. Ruas's advance. That's the ideal outcome there. Vatira backs up Ruas to the fake jump. Starts the air dribble from distance. It looks like the flip reset just took a bit too long to land. That gave Ruas plenty of time to challenge. Boost advantage has been exaggerated. No, by Rawas. Vatira challenges in reverse and makes it work. You know, the reverse challenges, it's like the fake, fake challenge. You turn around to indicate that you're faking and then you're going back in reverse. You go backwards at the opponent. But either way, Rawas does come away with a goal. Vatira could only hold on for so long. We're all tied up with a much more uh, low scoring game than we had in the last game. I think by this point, last game, it was something like 6 all or 7 5 or something. I don't recall there were so many goals. This one is uh, a much slower pace and a lot more controlled by both players. Ruas with a chance. Flick is good. Vatira's recovery is more than equal to it. Very nicely done. He's in a bit of an awkward spot though. His flick didn't do too much work for him there, Vatira. Ruas pounces on it and scores from just outside of his own box. The problem there for Matira is he needed a bit more height on that flick. He needed to force Rawas to have to make a save. You know, the fact Rawas is just able to challenge that flick and turn it around immediately didn't allow Matira any time to grab boost. That's what he was looking for there. He didn't expect a goal, most likely. He's trying to force Rawas out of position. Well, that is, that is risky. Matira's missed it. He makes up for his miss. But that was such a risky pre-flip attempt by Ruas. If he pulled it off, it would have been incredible, but I mean, you miss it. You're way out of position. Vatira had so much time to score the open net. 
that uh, even after missing it off the near post, Ruas wasn't back. So all tied up again. It has been deadlock for the majority of this game and the last. It's here at Dribbling with Ball Cam here to see exactly where Ruas is. That works out as he gets around him. Awkward position for Vatira, but he does so well. Rawas strong in the aerial challenge, but Vatira bumps in midair. Rawas has gone absolutely flying here. Vatira's got the open net slotted in the bottom corner. That, I believe, is a legitimate compliment from Rawas, because Vatira had no other option than to bump Rawas out of the game. He could not play the ball, but he sent Rawas absolutely flying. Minute and 23 to go. And remember what I said earlier, if Rawas wants to move ahead of Vatira in the group, he needs to win 3-1 or better. Vatira just needs two games here. So far, it's looking like Vatira could very well get two games in this series. I could see it going the distance. Oh, that's not what he wants to do, though. That is a pass to Rawas and an equal game. <laughs> not sure about that one by Vatira. Maybe a bit high on the shot, and maybe no backup plan should he miss. <laughs> that one went just about as far into the midfield as you can send it. We are all tied up again. Ruas, looking for the back corner boost, but in doing so, he's given the ball away. Did not want to play that one towards Vatira. Incredibly patient defense by Ruas. Doesn't work out this time. I mean, he just gave so much space to Vatira. Backing off, backing off, waiting for the flick, reacting, but not accordingly. Another lead for Vatira, this one even later in the game. And you know, Ruas kind of asked for that one. If he's not able to crossbar pinch that, then you're not going to have a good recovery against any kind of play like that. Good speed by Vatira in defense. Ruas forced high into the sky with a boost disadvantage, waiting for mid to spawn here. It didn't spawn for him in time. He has to retreat to his back corner. Here comes Vatira again. Doesn't flick the ball, just plays for the mind game. Concedes possession to Ruas, but that could have been so much worse for Vatira if the dunk was a big one. Vatira with very efficient defense. But Ruas might have baited him out of position here, though. Vatira just trying to survive. Ruas. Looking to get behind him and put the pressure on, but this is a good position for Vatira. Can he tie the series? Just has to hit the ground, and he does. And we will have an equal series 1 1. Vatira is a game away from finishing the group ahead of Ferwas. Of course, there is another horse in the race. You can't forget that. There is a third horse in the race for first place, and that horse is Naipo. He is. Currently playing against, or that uh, is actually TRK, sorry, I'm getting my KSA players mixed up. It's CRK. He's currently playing against Oski. Um, and we could take a look at the what's happening here, thanks to the blimp. Uh, so let's take a look at what's going on here. In the rest of the group, we've got Toxic playing against Shaddy. Winner of that um, will secure their spot in um, Salt Mine 3 Stage 2. The loser will go to the Promotion Relegation Tournament. And TRK, 2-1 up on Oski. If he can win the next game, he will uh, threaten to take first place in the group. Um, in order for that to happen, we need Ruas to be beating Vatira. Um, can we go to the group standings? Are they updated, Ben? Are, are they going to help us out here? Let's do it. Let's, let's really quickly try and explain right before we get into the last game. If Ruas and TRK both win 3-1, Vatira will move down out of the top spots and then TRK would win the group, I believe, on, on game diff. They're both trying to catch up to Vatira here. Um, in a th and there's even potential for a three-way tie, which Rawas would win on initial seed. It's kind of crazy, but let's get into game number four. We might not need, or game number three, sorry. Might not need to go through all of those scenarios. Um, if Vatira wins another game, that really simplifies things significantly. That's no doubt what he'll be looking to do, and then finish the job sweep the group and be the only player to do so. Clean takeoff by 
Batira, but Rawash shuts it down. Oh, well, that's a challenge and a half. You do not get much better than that when it comes to aerial challenges. Pre-jump. Clean interception. And an, a very easy finish as well. A couple of you guys asking where can you watch the other matches that are currently happening. TRK versus Oski is currently being streamed by Rizzo. Toxic versus Shaddy is currently being streamed by Jarby. We've got three games going on at the same time here. So you can, if you want to, tune into multiple. Beautiful recovery by Vatira. Rawas was in the area. Oh, what an outplay. Vatira with incredible hang time. Saving the dodge for the last minute. These guys are full of compliments for each other. How wholesome. That's not what we want in this salt mine. But truth be told, it kind of is. That's good to see. Rawas falling for Vatira's tricks. Not for the first time this series. Vatira proving to be mechanical enough, smart enough, and confident enough in his one's ability to take on one of the best players for the past few years. Rawas puts himself in front. Another edge for him to work with. Vatira looking like he got a bit out of position here. He, he looked like he was trying to wait for Rawas to fly past him. I don't know, maybe Vatira anticipated an air, an air dribble bump on that play. Um, didn't expect Rawas to just keep hitting the ball. Sitting low like that um, on a pre-jump aerial challenge. Really only something players do when they expect an air dribble bump. Now it's here, the massive challenge in the back corner. Cannot slot the rebound. He does pick up the boost seal, but I don't know if that's going to help him here. Rawas, with the wall shot, moves up 3-1 in the series. That's a couple of mistakes from Vatira now. It was a difficult shot, but one that he, I'm sure, would have expected to score. And the initial miss on the boost has kept him out of position for a bit too long. Rawas with... The boost advantage. Forcing Matira back again. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. Top bins by Rawas. 4-1. This game turning into the most one-sided that we've seen so far. Matira's still got plenty of time to stabilize, but you know, we see Rawas do this to players every now and then where he just builds up an advantage and People feel so much pressure um, looking up at the scoreboard and seeing that you're trailing by four or five or even six against Rawas and thinking, well, I guess I just have to go all in on every play then. Rawas throwing again. That's how strong he is against any kind of physicality ahead of the ball as he disposes of Vatira's attempted bump and scores again. Actually using Vatira's bump against him there. Rawas allowing the pull shot to happen. Now leads 5-1. This one's getting a bit out of control for Vatira. Vatira will have a chance for a boost seal here. Actually just tries to use it as bait. That was a smart idea by Vatira. Great demo as well. He can't really get the ball moving quickly, but it's another bad spawn. What was Rawas thinking spawning at that side? We may have had a uh, interesting situation here. If uh, it, it really would have depended. I think there was one spawn point there that Rawas might have been able to influence the play from. Because on the right and the left, there's actually different uh, positions you can spawn. Um, but that was quite a wide one there for Rawas. Wouldn't have mattered. Let's hear it. Within three. What's going to make it two? And he does. A convincing fake flick high. Opens the door at the bottom corner. That was a slight mistouch there by Rawas. Wanted to get some more distance on that clear. Good speed by Vatira with the wave dash. As soon as Rawas jumped, Vatira forced it underneath him. Vatira really has been able to do it all so far in Salt Mine 3. He's led convincingly. He's came back against many opponents just as convincingly. And he's doing it again here for Rawas. Making one good save. And then Vatira turns it around and scores just a bit too quickly for Rawas to react to. Boost ran out for both players there, but Vatira had so much momentum, he was able to force the advantage. Rawas lead disappearing before our eyes. Can he get a sick goal from the air? Flip reset is his. Vatira with the pre-jump and the fake. 
And the save on the attempted bump. In style, Vatira punishes Ruas for getting physical. He catches the ball at his own goal line right as Ruas flies over the top of him. I mean, that is composure to just watch your opponent jump over your head and not panic. If he, I think if he flipped into the ball there, Ruas would have recovered to make a save before Vatira could score. The fact that he caught it is what enabled him to accelerate the ball so quickly and actually score with a counter-attack. Nice, successful defense for Vatira. Rawas takes away the back corner boost though. Great work by him to fashion an advantageous position. And a banger of a shot will do the trick. Put himself up by one again. It all happens so quickly. When you look at the goalkeeper POV on these shots, it's just disgusting. You guys saw it the first time around there. How quickly it can happen. Just too much power from Vatira. Or from Ruas, sorry. Oh, Vatira trying to get a pogo here. He didn't get the best bounce, but in fact having no bounce at all might have helped out in that situation then rather than getting a small bounce. So he's able to recover quickly anyway. Wait, how do we get Adj? Oh, Twitch is actually just playing games with us right now. This is ridiculous. Matira should be scoring here. He is. Oh, I mean, those of you who didn't get ads, I, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with Twitch, man. I don't know. We run, we run ads during the break with the purpose of stopping ads during games, and then Twitch just automatically runs ads during games anyway. I don't know what, I don't know how I'm supposed to do this. I don't know how I'm supposed to stop this from happening. If there's any streamers in chat right now who know how to stop that from happening, because I know this is an issue other people have had as well, but if anybody solved it, I would love to know the answer because this is uh, this is this is a puzzling one. I don't know what to do. Let's um, let's get back into the apologies for ads. That was not intentional. Twitch just decided to do that. Uh, so welcome back, all of you guys. You got ads just in time for Rawas to take the lead, seven six. Atira came back well in this one. But Ruas has had the edge every now and, and then. He just keeps on responding to Vatira's equalizers with one more goal every time. So important for Ruas that he wins this game. Keeps himself in the running for first place in the group. If he doesn't want to play against Zen immediately in round one of the playoffs, he has to win this game. I'm running out for Vatira in this game. Boost running out for Vatira in this moment. Oh, I didn't even spawn for him. Huge shot by Ruas. Vatira was looking for the mid boost. And I think Ruas spotted that. You can tell that Vatira's waiting for the boost to spawn. What a shot as well. Huge power shot by Ruas. To go up by two. Now, pressure on Vatira. Can he come back again? Already came back from four goals down in this game. It's a good start for him. Delayed flick, and it's a monster. 8-7, Vatira from close range. Sends it right over Ruas's head. I mean, a lot of power on that one, but the, the timing is really what made that difficult for Ruas. Vatira pulling the trigger so late, very hard to react to. Now he's got 22 seconds to score one goal. He's now got 17 seconds to score two. Well worked by Ruas. Just a simple trip is all he needed. Matira tried to fly over him. It was not meant to be. You know, we've seen Moxie come back with uh, three goals in less than this time, so it should be fine. I'm sure Matira's got this. No big deal. Tries the delayed kickoff. It doesn't really go the way that he wanted it to. He's going to have an advantage here, but will he be able to score first try, which is what he needs to do? Rawas, not letting him through. Really good defense, of course, by Rawas. And he will be on double match points. This is interesting because the winner of the next game between the two players, winner of game four, will finish ahead of the other in the group. 
Um, and we can take a look. We can take a look as well at the blimp in a second to see what's happening in the other matches because there's a lot going on right now in this round. In fact, I think we do have confirmed scores, I believe. Um, I'm not sure if the blimp is ready. I'm not sure if it's flight. I'm not sure if it's airborne yet. All right, it is. Getting word that the blimp is here. So let's pull it in. We've got TRK confirmed. 3-1 over Oski. And Toxic confirmed 3-1 over Shaddy. So Toxic has eliminated Shaddy from Salt Mine uh, 3 Stage 1. Shaddy will be playing in the Promotion Relegation Tournament um, for Stage 2. Toxic secures his spot, his spot in uh, Stage 2 of the tournament. And if we take a look at the group stage, we can see that TRK for now has bumped himself up to the same series um, wins as Vatira. Now Vatira has to just get a game here in order to finish ahead of TRK. If he loses again, uh, then I think his win-loss is just going to plummet a bit too much. We'll find out exactly what's going to happen in the very next game. Still, chance of a three-way tie in Group A, just like we had in Group B. We had the Rock, Paper, Scissors in Group B with uh, Zen beating Naipo, Naipo beating Moxie, and Moxie beating Zen. And now in Group A, we've had TRK beating Rwas. Vatira beating TRK and now Rwas in the lead against Vatira. Vatira does have control of his destiny. Can he make it happen? Rwas making it work for it, of course, with multiple early saves. For those of you asking, by the way, we will have North America Salt Mine after EU is done today. We'll be going straight into North American Salt Mine 3 NA groups. Um, and we'll be concluding the NA groups for Stage 1, just like we have for EU. That's going to be happening right after Rawas versus Batira concludes. That's a tidy outplay there by Rawas, close to the goal. He didn't have the easiest angle to pop that over Vatira. Vatira was quickly closing the gap. Rawas quick enough and ahead by one. Strong defense again by Rawas. Both players using all their boosts, but Rawas survives and scores on the counter again. You know, Vatira's really pushing the limit here. He's trying to force the issue, but Rawas, I mean, he's just do doing what Rawas does. He got Vatira out of position with a great save in game one. Again, he's just getting saves that are good enough to put Vatira out of position. Vatira's got to be, you know, careful or just a tiny bit faster. Because if you are going to go all in, you better make it work against Rawas. Vatira straight down the middle. Another delayed flick. This one saved by Rawas. And look at the recovery again. It's immediate. Vatira wasn't ready for it. It's in his net for 3 0. Rawas is just too quick. Way too smooth. Saves, recovers, and scores. All in one fluid motion. Vatira came back in the last game, but this is not ideal. He has to try and stabilize here. Clearly, Rawas has swung this series in his favor. Vatira again. Early flick this time. It's into the bar. High. And that's going to actually force Vatira back briefly. And you know, that's what happens when Rawas starts to save up your shots over and over again. You start to flick the ball higher and higher. Eventually, the crossbar is your worst enemy. Will it be enough? Three, zero in game four. Rawas looks like he may have figured out how to beat Vatira today. You know, I can actually give you guys a, an update on the game win-loss differential situation here. Um, while Vatira tries to score his first goal of the game with an air dribble bump, which he does, Vatira currently sits at, get this chat, Plus eight game win loss differential. TRK plus seven. Rawas plus six. If Rawas wins this game, he'll go to plus seven. If Vatira loses this game, he'll go to plus seven. They'll all be on plus seven. It'll be a three way tie, not just in series score, but also in game differential. And that'll mean Rawas will win the group because he came in as a first seed. So actually, Vatira needs to win this game to win the group. And if he loses this game, 
He finishes third. That's incredible. This game, game four, decides where Vatira and Rawas will finish. I think TRK is guaranteed second either way. Because um, if Rawas wins this, Rawas will be first. And if Vatira wins this, Vatira will be first. So TRK is locked in second um, already. But that is absolutely insane. You know, when we chucked in that tiebreaker, we did not for a second think it would, in fact, be used in a three-way tie. But they've all beaten each other. So head-to-head -head out the window. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go to initial, initial seed if things continue going. And if you, it's actually a tiebreaker that's used in RLCS as well. Before anybody says, well, what is this tiebreaker? It's a pretty commonly used tiebreaker. Because we can't, uh, well, a couple of people asking, what about gold diff? And we don't use gold diff in 1v1 because it would be uh, counterproductive to good gameplay. You know, you're, dis you're not encouraging comebacks if you use gold difference as a, as a, um, as a tiebreaker. Oh, what a 50 by Basira, that's ridiculous. But Rawas is really making it so difficult for him to get the ball past him in this game. This has been a frustrating game for Vatira. Every time he does something, he's risking getting countered. Now Rawas just goes in from a greater distance. Vatira knew that Rawas is further away than he was, but he was hoping he wouldn't go. Vatira, air dribble. Rawas with the pre-jump off the wall to block him. Just a perfect read on the aerial play. Rawas backs him up again. Yep. Very extended midfield play here. Vatira needs to be the person scoring at the end of this, you would think. And he wants it with the air dribble bump. And of course, Ruas is not going to give it to him easily. Another save. This has been a defensive masterclass from Ruas. Nine saves in under four minutes. Can Vatira find a way through? He's done so twice already this game. And that's not enough for now. Tira slowing the pace right down and 50-ing it underneath Ruas, who expected a shot or a flick at some point here. He had one jump and then a recovery and then another jump from Ruas. Tira just rolled it at him the entire time. Can Vatira come back? Ruas feels inevitable right now. Goals are so hard to come by when Ruas is in this kind of form. Rawas does have the advantage here in terms of boost. Vatira is trying to close the distance, but he's got zero boost in no man's land. And Rawas outplays him. Well, Vatira might have made a mistake here. At some point, you have to accept that the other player is going to have the ball. And I think continuing to pressure that ball may have been a step too far. 52 seconds to go. Rawas so close to locking in the first seed in the group. Can he get across the line? Delayed kickoff for Vatira. Actually, trying to control that one as well. Looks like Ruas just too quick. He recovers with speed. Gets right back into the play. Vatira forced to dive. Ruas sees it coming, blocks it easily, and he scores again. It's been that kind of game for Vatira. He tried everything to get the ball past Ruas. Ruas has been a complete brick wall. And it looks like Vatira's first loss in the group will come in the final round. Insanely close in this group. Insanely close in both groups. Two three-way ties in series. Two three-way ties between the top three. And unlike the other group, this one cannot be separated by game differential. Rawas with another advantage. He's just playing this one out so carefully. Matira trying to make the impossible happen. We've seen an impossible comeback once today, but this one would be even more ridiculous. It's now or never for Vatira. Can he get the ball in quickly enough? The answer is yes. It's another mind game. And now he needs a kickoff goal and a zero second goal. And where's the spawn going to be? This is huge. Diagonal spawn does favor the kickoff goal player. How is he going to try and get it? He delays. And it might, oh, it might dip in. It's so close. It's not going to be in time. It hits the post anyway. Matira tried a great effort at the end there to try and get the goal. And it just wasn't meant to be. And that confirms the Rawas victory. 3-1, crucially, over Matira, who absolutely dominated the field. I mean, Rawas 
played goalkeeper this game, gave Vatira the ball, he gave him the field to play with, and then he still wins it. A very, very frustrating game for Vatira, I'm sure. But, you know, that's what you have to do when you play your ass. You've got to solve his defense. You've got to figure out a reliable way to make him uncomfortable. And Vatira just could not do it in that last game. Uh, let's take a look at the post-series... Oh, highlights first, sorry. Let's take a look at the highlights of the uh, series here. Um, while I confirm the final results. That's actually insane. I, yeah, I'm, I'm taking a look at it now. We have indeed got a three-way tie for first place. We'll have a look at the exact standings in a bit. Yeah, going all the way back to game one, which if you missed it, is a must-watch in this series. Incredible game one between these two players. They were so evenly matched. Um, it's a game one where Rawas was, was victorious, and then um, it just went a little bit more towards Rawas in the third and fourth games. That's where his defense started to reach a level that Vatira wasn't um, able to deal with. Let's take a look at the post-series stats. I feel like this one's going to look pretty ridiculous with the, uh, with the field control because, uh, yeah, that's a, for a series to be that heavily in one favor that really shows who the defensive player is. But that's what, that's what Rawas does. He's amazing um, in defense. And I think still, uh, it's not even a debate. He is the best defender in the world um, when it comes to ones. A great try by Vatira. Huge showing for Vatira. Um, joining TRK and Rawas at the top of the group. Do we have the uh, the uh, the group stage ready? We do. Right, brilliant. Let's let's look at how, how the final standings come together, ladies and gentlemen. Another three way tie. Not only are they tied in series win loss at four one. This is Rawas TRK Vatira. I'm talking about. Um, but they're also equal in uh, the head to head to head because it just updated now. Good stuff. They're, they're also equal in head-to-head -head because they all beat each other. <laughs> they're, they, they perfectly tied that one. And they, they're equal in game diff. They're all plus seven. That means that the only way we can separate the ties is with initial seed. And uh, Rawas came in as first seed, TRK second, Vatira third. So that is how they will finish. Um, but if Vatira got one more game at any point, he would have won this group. The difference between third and first is that small. Absolutely insane. Look at group B as well, by the way. One game difference separates them. But yeah, in a, a three-way tie, just to, just to go over that again in case anybody missed it. First tiebreaker is series wins. They're all tied. Second tiebreaker is game differential. That's your game wins minus your game losses. They're all the same. Uh, third tiebreaker is head-to-head-to-head. -head -to -head. So if somebody won all the matches in that uh, three-way tie against the other players, they would win. In this case, they all beat each other. So it's, an, again, a complete, <laughs> a complete tie. TRK beat Ruas. Ruas beat Vatira. Vatira beat TRK. Um, so what that means, I think, do we have, uh, Ben, do we have the playoff bracket populated or are we going to show that after the break? We, we do. All right, let's have a quick look at that before we go to the break and come back with North America, um, salt mine three. This is what the playoff bracket for EU looks like. This will be commencing on Monday, the 9th of October. So that's where, where you're going to want to be. If you want to see these matches, Rawas and Naupo in the uh, upper quarterfinal there, at the very top. Zen against TRK in the very bottom one. Now, the winner of those two games, Rawas, Naupo, and Zen TRK, will go straight along that line to the final section. They'll, they'll bypass around. The loser will go into the semifinal, so they get two lives. Now, Vatira, Khaled, Moxie, and uh, Oski are all on their last life already. They need to win, or else they're out. Um, so those are the matches that we're going to see on uh, Monday. The quarterfinals and the semifinals will be down to the top four next Monday. But congrats to all the players who made it. Incredibly stacked event. And these are the guys who made it out of the groups, both groups of death, if you ask me. Uh, but that's all we've got for Europe today. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go to a short break. And when we're back, we're going to have North American Salt Mine 3. So don't go far. We'll be back in a few minutes with any action. See you there.